On this edition of Fulton at Work, we're going behind the scenes to find out how Fulton's finest new recruits maintain their safety when operating an emergency vehicle. Plus, we're putting one of FGTV's own to the test to see how the average driver compares to those who protect and serve. I'm Daryl Carver. All this and more is coming up on Fulton at Work. Please stay with us. Welcome to our program. I'm Daryl Carver. Fulton County's police department is full of women and men who have taken the oath to protect and serve the citizens of Fulton County. However, when it comes time to get behind the wheel of an emergency vehicle, their safety is in jeopardy without the proper training. That's the reason the Emergency Vehicle Operators Course, or EVOC for short, was created. And FGTV's own Priscilla Ortega recently got a behind-the-scenes look at how it works. Police recruits have a number of classes they need to pass in order to complete their 11-week mandated police academy training. That includes a three-day driving training class. And in one of those classes, there's a braking course, which is behind me, which I will attempt to pass today. Driving during emergency situations is part of the job for police officers. whether it's quickly maneuvering around tight corners. Uh, I hit a few cones, I'm going to be honest. Suddenly breaking to avoid hitting somebody or getting out of a skid. Officers have to be prepared to handle the unexpected. We teach uh, skid recovery, uh, icy roads, wet roads, whatever. We'll teach you how to come out of a skid hopefully without hitting anything. The ABS braking exercise is one of the three tests recruits are required to pass. I watched several recruits attempt the course and then I received a quick lesson. When we hit our speed and we see 35, uh, 30, I'm sorry, 30 on the monitor, then we let our foot off the gas. Okay. Aim for that entrance. When you see the red light, apply the brakes and get on them hard. When you st steer okay. around the mare and then get back over in your box without going out of the box. Yes. Outstanding. Then it was my chance to see if I can make the turn fast enough, avoid the cones, and break when I see the red light, then stay inside the box of cones. After a couple of attempts, I got a round of applause from the instructors <laughs> and cheers from the police recruits. Now, obviously, during a real recruitment testing, there is not an instructor in the back seat directing them on where to go. Now, technically, I did not pass the course because the back of the car was still blocking the flow of traffic, but it was a good effort. And it just goes to show you how much testing these recruits go before they actually graduate. Reporting for FGTV, I'm Priscilla Ortega. Thank you, Priscilla. We're going to hear from her a little bit later in the show. But first, we're joined by Lieutenant Greg Shelton to discuss the EVOC program and why it's such an important part of new recruits' training. First of all, thank you for joining us. It's good to be here. Uh, please tell our viewers more about the EVOC program and, as we said, why it's so significant. Well, the EVOC program is it's the, it's the driving program, uh, driving portion of of their training. Uh, it is so important because uh, our officers, whether they be uh, sheriff deputies or police officers or deputy marshals, 95% uh, of their uh, tour duty or their shift is spent inside a, a, a police car. Uh, so we've got to make sure that they are uh, capable of handling that police car in encounters that they might have on the street. Now, we learned in the story that there are three different courses in the EVOC program, braking, precision driving, and skidding. Go into a little bit more detail about what's involved with each, since this training course does not involve high-speed pursuits, per se. Okay. The, uh, well, the braking course uh, that we just saw, for example, uh, is called the braking course, but there's so much more. It's like I explained to the recruits all the time. There's so much more involved in the 
uh, negotiation of that course other than just applying the brakes. It's about uh, speed control. It's about uh, steering control. Um, if you don't, if you don't do any of these uh, other things correctly, uh, getting your speed right, getting your uh, nice smooth steering to uh, have a nice smooth weight shift in the car, uh, and then the uh, setup in the obstacle itself, uh, making sure the car is is positioned where it should be when it should be, and then then the last thing involved would be uh, hitting the, the brakes hard enough to activate the ABS system and then uh, negotiating the, uh, uh, the obstacle itself. So, uh, you know, the, the, the term braking course, you know, there, there's so much more involved uh, than, just the, than just slamming on the brakes. Uh, the precision cone course uh, is, a, is, is probably the most difficult uh, portion of the, uh, of, the, of the whole entire EVOC course. That's what we see as instructors, uh, what I've seen in my years of uh, training that the students tend to have the most problems with. You're talking a course laid out over an entire parking lot consisting of uh, roughly 400 cones. Uh, the precision course you ha is, is testing a variety of aspects of, of the students driving. It, it would be uh, driving forward, backing up, uh, turning into parking, places, uh, parking spaces front ways, backing into parking sp uh, spaces, uh, negotiating curves, uh, negotiating figure eights, uh, negotiating 360 degree turns, and all this within a very tight uh, confined area that is not, there's not a lot of room for uh, uh, a lot of room for error. Um, it's, it's laid out just so the measurements are, are, are laid out in, in such a way that uh, everything has got to be perfect um, all the way through. Um, so not a whole lot of room for uh, for error. And then the uh, last uh, course that we uh, test is the skid control course. And what that's involved with is uh, we've got a um, area of the uh, parking lot that's got a, a special surface uh, that has been laid down, a slick surface. And then we wet that surface down even more with uh, water. Uh, the cars that the students are in have uh, slicks on the uh, rear of the car. And then we have a brake pedal on the passenger side of the car and the idea is to uh, attempt to, to put the student into a skid, uh, meaning the rear, the rear end of their car, uh, we try to make the rear end of the car break loose and uh, that is come around and skid out. And they're taught how to uh, counter steer and to prevent the car from spinning out. So uh, we, we think that's, you know, while we don't get a whole lot of ice down here, we do get the uh, the wet and rainy roads, and we want our officers to be able to uh, recover if uh, if their you know rear end starts to uh, skid out and uh, break loose, and we, you know we want them to be able to to recover that skid and uh, you know cause uh, any kind of an accident. I mean, it sounds like you're trying to get these these drivers prepared for every eventuality. How are the trainers selected to teach this course? Well, the trainers are, uh, have got to show a proficiency in their uh, driving as well. Um, got, to have, uh, got to show a, uh, a low uh, accident um, uh, percentage as far as you know, how many chargeable accidents they've had. That needs to be you know, really low. Uh, and then they're sent to a two-week course, uh, training course down in, uh, at our state regional academy in uh, Forsyth, Georgia. And it's uh, a very intensive uh, uh, two weeks where they're, 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 they go over the basic course of EVOC, the advanced course of EVOC, which is, uh, involves a high-speed track. And they also uh, uh, go into uh, PIT, uh, that's the precision immobilization, uh, immobilization and uh, uh, termination um, uh, program and, you know, to, uh, to stop a pursuit. Uh, the uh, the students or the potential EVOC instructors are put through a very very intensive uh, training program uh, to ensure that they're able to uh, pass this on to their students when they return. Now, please talk about the timing of each of the recruit that's done, since being faster really isn't necessarily better. 
the timing on the precision cone course is, is really the only thing that they're, they're timed on. Uh, it's uh, roughly uh, three minutes, well it is, it's, it's three minutes 45 seconds, uh, which is plenty of time for the student to uh, safely negotiate uh, the uh, obstacles uh, throughout the course. It's, it's really important that the students uh, understand that you know, we, we, we teach them to, we want things, we want them to be smooth in the course and not try to, uh, because, the, because the course is so tight, there's not a whole lot of room for error and they don't have a, um, it, it's making it a whole lot harder on, them, on themselves if they try to rush things. And the students are actually penalized for uh, attempting to go through the course too fast. So it's uh, the the while there is a time limit on the on the the students uh, th when they're trained initially, it's uh, just what what's emphasized the most is uh, getting through the course uh, at a nice uh, consistent uh, pace and a nice smooth pace in order uh, that so that they can negotiate the uh, obstacles uh, safely. Now, what happens if a recruit fails this portion of their training? Will they no longer be qualified to be a police officer? If the recruits uh, fail this portion of the of the course of the mandate course, they are removed uh, from training at that time, and it will be up to their department uh, to because they, we we run a regional academy, uh, and it would be up to in our case it would be up to the chief uh, to decide whether or not they that. They, they, that they could return to another class and be recycled into another class to repeat the course. Lieutenant, thank you for your time today. Thank you. And speaking of real life situations, when we come back, we find out what happens when one of FGTV's own takes a spin on the very same course. Please stay with us. <music> Welcome back to Fulton at Work. In our last segment, Lieutenant Greg Sheldon took us behind the scenes of the emergency vehicle operators course. And all that got us thinking, how would the average citizen fare on that course? While well, our own Priscilla Ortega left the front of the camera to get behind the wheel to try it out. And she joins us now to talk about her experience. First of all, thank you for joining us, Priscilla. Thank you for having me. Now, you participated in the braking portion of the program. Tell us what that experience was like for you. Well, the experience started off by me watching a lot of the other recruits taking the course themselves. So it was a little bit intimidating seeing how fast they were taking the turn and how they had to avoid hitting the cones. And a couple of them did knock over some of the cones. And you have to, you only have like a certain amount of like leeway before you have to like completely stop. So it was definitely intimidating um, watching before I actually got behind the wheel. And they're wearing helmets. So that just shows, like, you know, there is, like, a danger factor in there. Now, is there anything you learned in the braking course that could help our drivers the next time they go out for a drive? Well, I definitely don't recommend doing something similar. You have to take off pretty quickly, and you do have to take the turn um, pretty sharp, uh, probably about, like, 30, 35 miles per hour. But what I did learn... and will feel more comfortable in case, you know, I ever need to use it is the automatic braking system. Like you have to put your foot all the way down and it, like the brakes make sort of like a grinding noise and that's just like the system going into play. So it was definitely taught me that, you know, if you do need to slam on your brakes hard, you know, that you will be able to do that and you will be able to stop pretty quickly. You just have to slam all the way down and don't be scared and don't put your foot off the brake. That's what they said, you know. If you hear that grinding, that's normal. Um, keep your foot on the, on the brake until you completely stop. Now, you talked about there being a lot of those cones that were set up on the course. What did those cones represent, and what happened if you hit one of them? Well, if you hit one of them, you fail the course. Um, they had different heights of the cones. So the first one uh, was the first one right next to where you're supposed to enter, and they called that one the mayor. So if you hit the mayor, that's obviously not good. So you would fail the course. But the other ones, you know, just represent people and the box that you're supposed to not get out of. There's a cone before you make the turn just letting you know that 
there is a turn coming up. And so th those are what the cones represent. And, and you talked to the recruits. What did they think of the training there? Well, they had a little bit more time to prepare for the training than I did. A lot of them were nervous, and a few of them did have, like, test anxiety. But after, you get, like, a chance to redo it. So after the first one, you get your nerves out, you know, you're able to do it again the second time. So there, is, there was more training involved, and most of them did, did well. That being said, how did your score compare to their scores? Well, like I said, they were able to train a little bit longer than me, so I didn't technically pass. I did get a round of applause, as you saw, because I didn't hit one of the cones, so I didn't kill anybody or knock anybody over, but I didn't pull my car all the way through to the cone, so if that was an intersection, the tail end of my car would have been um, in the roadway, but I was just so excited that like nothing bad happened and I didn't hit any cones. So I, I don't even remember what happened after that. that. All that being said, would you do the either the skid course or the precision driving course? Um, they were definitely trying to get me to do the skid course. They said, oh, it'll be fun, it'll be great, you should try it out. So they were really egging it to be this really fun experience, but I w probably won't be trying it unless it's required, unless my boss makes me. Priscilla, thank you for sharing all that with us. Thank you. Please stick around for more of Fulton at Work. That's all of our time. Thanks for joining us for Fulton at Work. And a very special thanks to our guests, Lieutenant Greg Shelton and Priscilla Ortega, for joining us today. And we want to connect with you online. Please check us out on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I'm Daryl Carver, and we'll see you next time.